Shalom, shalom, chavarim. I'm Stephen Benun. You are watching Israeli News Live. And of course, today we have a very special broadcast, a little different, more of an educational broadcast, you might say. Uh, we have Daniel Austin with us uh, today, uh, author of a brand new book. Uh, and it is a book called A Chelsea. Uh, actually, let me just pull the page up real quick before we get started here with Daniel there. But it's Chelsea, the Golden Retriever. And I think actually, Daniel, the name of the book is a little different. Let's see. Chelsea's New Beginning is the name of the actual book. Daniel, welcome to our broadcast here. Uh, glad you. to have you. So, All right. uh, anyway, Daniel, listen, this is exciting to me. I mean, I'm an author myself, and one of the things I've always wanted to do myself was actually write a children's book, and I never have found the, found the time to do so. Uh, but you've managed to pull this off, and from what I understand, this is going to be a series of books that you're writing. Uh, if you would, just tell us what inspired you to write children's books? Well, I've always wanted to write my own stories for as long as I can remember. I love stories in general. I grew up watching movies, loving movies, performing in front of an audience, and I took steps to better myself as a storyteller. I visited websites to polish my writing skills. I took creative writing classes in high school and college. And this story in particular is very special to me because I'm basing the main character on a real golden retriever I had named Chelsea. Oh wow, that's that's amazing. That's amazing, Daniel. Uh, how how old are you? How old are you now? Thirty years old. Thirty years old. And how long how long how long has it been since you actually had your own golden retriever that you're speaking of, or do you still have the golden retriever that you that you kind of based the story on? She passed away a long time ago um, when I was seven years old. So it's been, wow, over 20 years. Wow, that is amazing. You know, it's, it's really inspiring for me because uh, my first dog that I had was a golden retriever as well. He's a short haired golden retriever. His name was Dipshay. I got him when I guess I was either four or five years old. And, uh, and so, and he was with me up until maybe about 12 13 years old something like that and uh and and of course i miss him greatly so i i can understand why you would want to write about uh, a, a dog that has been part of your own life uh where did the where did the uh of course we kind of answer that where the idea of the golden retriever came from but can you tell us a little bit more about that well she was the best dog we ever had she had a huge influence on my childhood she was just a really laid-back dog and she just loved children. Um, there were a lot of children in our household growing up and she just, I've never known her to be fearful or aggressive. She was always real friendly to everybody. So with, with that being stated there, you know, you come from a big family, which I'm aware of that as well. Uh, when you write about the characters in your book, are these characters also uh, based on real life characters? Most of them are. Real life experiences have inspired me to write many things in this book, as well as events I see happening in my own not life in the not so distant future. And I've also been employed at dog daycare and boarding facilities. And to my knowledge, no one had written any books about dogs going to daycare. I started out thinking they would just be one off stories about dogs at daycare. And I had Chelsea be the main character, but I then realized Chelsea needed a background and when I wrote Chelsea's New Beginning, I knew this whole thing needed to be a full story from beginning to end. Oh, it is amazing there. So does the, when you write the story, I, I, do you take it beyond your own life's experience, uh, perhaps with Chelsea, and make it more like what if you would have had more time with her in real life as you write about it? That's exactly what I do. Oh, that's amazing. That, you know, that's, that's, that's the type of story that's just uh, uh, like they had a little kid's story years ago, the, the never-ending story or something like that. It just keeps going and going. That's nice. I like that. Uh, let me, before we go a little bit, some more questions I want to ask you. I want to share with the people your Facebook page here. This is uh, Daniel Austin's Facebook page on the book that he's writing here, uh, Chelsea's New Beginning. And, of course, it, you have right here at the beginning, 
Chelsea the Golden Retriever is the Facebook page itself. So if you want to go uh, visit Daniel's Facebook page or even his YouTube channel uh, is the same thing. Chelsea the Golden Retriever. Right now there's 16 subscribers and uh, shoot, we got a subscriber sell. So make that 17 subscribers. And I've actually watched some of the videos on here. So it's kind of nice because you get a narration. And I think that that's an awesome idea too, Daniel, for children uh, that would, you know, that would want to hear the story, but maybe not old enough to yet to read as of yet. So, uh, so have you, have you always known that you wanted to write children's books? Well, I've always known that I wanted to be an author, and I was open to the idea of writing children's books, and the right ideas just came to me. There you go. That makes sense. So if you would, tell us a little bit about your path about becoming a writer. I, you know, you spoke about that a little bit already, but if you can kind of give us some more details. I know you said you took uh, uh, creative writing courses, things like that, but if you can be a little bit more detailed on that. Well, as a child, my siblings and I would make up stories using the toys we had to play with. In third grade, I had a friend who wrote stories and inspired me to do it myself. When I was in fourth grade, we as a class were assigned to write stories, and one of my ideas from playtime with my siblings crept in, and my story was actually selected to be performed by a high school theater group. And since then, I would write stories off and on, including at least two attempts to write a full novel. Some things that would stand in my way of making a career out of my writing would be writer's block and not knowing how to overcome it and the fact that I have Asperger's. I believe that for a while my Asperger's affected the way I wrote my pieces in the sense that I didn't always have a full grasp on how life works and I let it discourage me. It always held me back from things in my life that were very important to me as well. But over time I said to myself, I'm in charge of my life, not my autism. If I'm inspired to write something, I'm going to write it and I'm going to share it with the world. I'm always willing to better my writing and I'll do whatever it takes to succeed and make my stories heard. You know, you bring up something that I didn't even know we were even would discuss in, in this interview here, uh, Daniel. And if you could, can you tell the, those that are listening in tonight a little bit about Asperger's? I know it is a form of autism. But can you share with us a little bit about that? What actually is Asperger's? Well, it's more high functioning than other forms of autism. I'm sure you hear that a lot. Um, but the thing is, is you've overcome those challenges. Like you said, you're taking control of your own life and you're moving forward. And that's a commendable uh, thing to do. I mean, I remember meeting you when we were uh, there at the conference there uh, that your mom and some others there in Kansas had hosted there. And and you were just a pleasant man to meet. You know, you seem to have a good control on your life. Uh, and I was even amazed to even hear that you had a form of autism to begin with because you never struck me as that type of, of a person. So... It, to me, it tells me that you have taken control of your life and by making the step to actually write a children's book and not only a children's book, but a children's series shows that you can do anything you want if you put your heart in it. Yeah, that's my sentiments exactly, really. I'm determined to live uh, not just as normal of a life as possible, but just... Uh, just pursue and go after my dreams. Absolutely, Daniel. Listen, tell us a little bit about some of the characters in your book series, The Chelsea the Golden Retriever. Uh, we're really curious to know a little bit more about them. Well, in the story, Chelsea is abandoned at an animal shelter, and when she's there, she meets a giant schnauzer named Brizo, who is based on a real dog by one of my former employers. Brizo is the first friend that Chelsea makes in her time of need, and when Chelsea gets adopted by Nathan, we get the feeling that Brizo's story is not over yet. Nathan becomes Chelsea's new owner by the end of the book, and he serves as a benevolent authority figure. Chelsea looks up to him for safety and guidance. Nathan has two other dogs, a German Shepherd named Rocky and a Yorkie named Willie, 
whom Chelsea becomes very close with. Lily is based on a real Yorkie with the same name, and she's like Chelsea's big sister. She's wise but fun-loving at the same time. Rocky, though, let's just say he prefers to take his time with new members of the family. Nathan also has three cats, Ophelia, George, and Sassy, who are based on real cats I knew working at a cat clinic. Ophelia and George don't want anything to do with Chelsea, or any of the other dogs for that matter, but Sassy is friends with Chelsea and becomes a sort of self-guidance as well. That is that is amazing. I was showing some of the uh, uh, video clips that you have on YouTube, especially when you spoke about the, uh, the, the giant schnauzer uh, in the background, which does kind of bring me to a different question as well, and that's the artist uh, of your book. And I'm a little out of sequence in the way I was going to ask my questions tonight. But you do see these amazing photos that, have, that, that go along with your story timeline. Can you tell us a little bit about the artist of the book? Her name is Melissa Nettleship, and she has been wonderful. Her style of art is exactly what I imagined for Chelsea's World, and she has been very reliable and dedicated to this project. I couldn't have gotten as far as I have without her. She, needs to cry. she has her own Tumblr account, and you can check out Melissa's art. It's called... I'll uh, spell it out for you here. Um, Adelaide Art. Okay. It's called Adelaide Art. You can find it on Facebook and Twitter. She's just an amazing artist. We will take what I'll do is I'll actually I'll share a link in the description for those of you that are interested. Uh, and knowing a little bit more about the artist, uh, uh, you can go to the description later and check that out as well. Uh, let me ask you this as well, Daniel. When will your book series, Chelsea the Golden Retriever, become available for people to actually purchase? I know they can see clips online. You can see it on YouTube, on your YouTube channel, as well as your Facebook and Twitter account. But when will they actually be able to purchase a copy of the book? As of now, I am shooting for sometime in early December and it will first be available on Amazon. That'll be amazing. So uh, as far as being able to find out more information about the upcoming book series, Ch Chelsea the Golden Retriever, uh, what's a good way for them to contact you about this? Well, we mentioned my Facebook and Twitter page earlier as well as my YouTube channel. Um, but in the near future, Chelsea will have her own website. I am working with my publisher on that. That is, that is very amazing. We appreciate that information as well. One thing, too, I want to share with you guys out there that are listening. And uh, uh, Daniel, uh, they, they've, he's created a GoFundMe account to help get this book published. And I can't help but understand that need. I know the first book I ever published uh, was uh, Israel, Are They Still God's People? And... You know, when you're an unknown author, uh, you normally end up doing your first book as self-published. So it's not that easy to get going to start with, unless there's a publisher out there willing to take your take your work and put it on the market for you. And so Daniel did start a GoFundMe page uh, for that purpose there, and we've already placed that in the description link for you. Uh, if you don't see it when you're watching live, just come back to the video a little bit later there. Uh, and you can help support that project there uh, because it is quite expensive. And, uh, and I was fortunate enough, there was one man that really believed in the work that I was doing as well. And he ended up footing the bill to make our work possible. And it's mainly because of the artwork, the editing that uh, has to be put into the project and then the printing and stuff like that just to get it going, especially if you print a certain number to where it'd be a little bit more affordable for people to be to be able to get a hold of, of that information. And so uh, you can actually see here on the screen now the, the GoFundMe page. It's GoFundMe.com. Uh, uh, and of course, it's uh, forward slash F forward slash help hyphen make hyphen children books hyphen bestseller. Uh, Daniel, we really hope that uh, Chelsea's New Beginnings will become a bestseller for you. Uh, we congratulate you on the work that you've done, and, 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 and of course, you're a living testimony that miracles happen, and it seems like that 
God is blessing your family uh, to see those type of miracles on a daily basis. I appreciate you saying that, sir. So thank you so much, Daniel, for joining us tonight. Friends, listen, go subscribe to the channel. You know, I, we're ordering the books for our daughter as soon as they come out as well. Uh, but I know, especially many of you like us, you have grandchildren, you have small children, maybe. And I think it's a great way to give them something to read because that's one of the greatest gifts you can give a child is the gift of reading. Daniel Austin, thank you, my brother. God bless you. God bless your family. And thank you for being here with us uh, here on Israeli News Live. Thank you very much, Stephen.